start lecture 14 and the course is corrosion protection methods and topic will be uh, material aspects for corrosion protection. In fact, we have talked about the material tetrahedron related situation and we could see that processing, composition, microstructure as well as property and finally, performance those are all interlinked and here performance means corrosion protection and durability and the property is basically electrochemical behavior which is nothing but the corrosion behavior. So, we discussed in our last lecture. Now, we talk about uh, some specific examples of composition related issue or composition related uh, aspect for corrosion protection and interesting part is it is very difficult to uh, different differentiate between composition and microstructure. In fact, both are interlinked. So, we will try to look at the corrosion protection aspects separately, but time to time you will see that there are mixed up because it is very difficult to dist distinguish two aspects separately. In fact, if we uh, the researchers try to do it. So, if we want to see the composition effect, we fix the microstructure and change the composition and sometimes we fix the microstructure and change the composition, but it is very difficult. For example, if we consider alloy system and then if we try to see a simple iron carbon diagram, if we want to fix the microstructure, it is very difficult in the sense by changing the carbon content only, but it will be very difficult because the relative content of the second phase which is nothing but the cementite would change as well as uh, that would lead to a change in the surface appearance of the microstructure and that would also have a effect on the uh, materials corrosion behavior fine. So, but we will try to do it as far as possible by giving some examples. So, the course is corrosion protection method lecture 14, topic is on materials aspect for corrosion protection. So, if we talk about composition and let us say microstructure, And then finally, the influence on surface film or the passivity. Okay. So, if we consider this part only, so then we can cite one example where let us say how this passive film character is changed by because of the change in alloying elements in a 304 stainless steel. Okay. So, here we are not talking about the microstructure part. So, microstructure part we are not talking about here, we are talking about only composition and then its influence on surface film and then its influence on corrosion resistance and the example a steel composition is chromium is around 19 percent, uh, carbon is 0 0.09 percent, nickel around 9 percent manganese around 0 0.8 manganese percent, sulfur uh, silicon 1 percent, phosphorus 0 0.04 
and sulfur 0.03 percent. So, this is typical composition of 304 stainless steel. So, the stability of the surface film would vary because of change in this all those compositions, all those alloying elements. If we note down those alloying element effect individually by seeing the penetration depth and here the penetration depth let us say if we talk about effect of chromium. Okay. So, effect of chromium if you see Okay. So, now and if we talk about penetration per year millimeter per year. So, here we y axis we are talking about penetration. So, this penetration is equivalent to a corrosion rate penetration rate. and it can be written in terms of MPY or millimeter per year. MPY is a mils per year okay. and the convention is uh, nowadays we always mention in terms of millimeter per year. Now, if we talk about chromium content this is increasing this way. So, now if it is 10 percent and here percentage if remember these are all weight percent. Now, 10 then we have 15 then we have 20 then 25 and this is 1.0 then it varies like this. So, you have around 15 percent, we have around 0 0.7. So, if we this is 0 0.7, then 20 percent we can have it around uh, around 17, 18 percent it will be around 0 0.3, then around 22 percent it will be 0 0.15 or so more than 20 more than 20. So, this is it can be here see 0 0.3 percent and around little close to 20 24 percent it could be close to around 0 0.1 percent as a 0 0.1 uh, sorry. So, these are millimeter per year. So, that means here it is close to around 0 0.8 this will be close to around 0. 4, this will be 0 0.3, this will be close to 0 0.1. So, now if we plot it and extend it, extrapolate it, so the plot would look like this. Okay. So, as we uh, decrease the chromium below 15 percent, suddenly we see that the good amount of increase in penetration rate. So, that means good amount of uh, reduction in corrosion resistance, but if we go around close to 18 to 18 and more uh, the improvement in corrosion resistance uh, is not that much, but and that actually gives us an idea that it is not good to go beyond 19, 18, 19 percent in chromium because for chromium because it would unnecessarily increase the price of that steel without giving much of effect on the corrosion resistance. So, that is what 304 we maintain chromium percentage around 18 to 19 percent. So, this is effect of chromium and when we talk about the effect of chromium we are actually talking about the stability of surface film we are not involved involving microstructure, but microstructure would not change much here because it will still remain austenite. Okay. So, here we can say that microstructure is almost constant. So, this is austenitic 
stainless steel and then we are seeing the effect. Okay. And here the steel uh, uh, it is solution aligned and quenched. So, uh, when we talk about the processing part because we have to also involve processing. So, the processing if we consider in this particular composition case. In all cases, uh, those elemental changes are done and then processing is solution treated, the steel sample is solution treated. So, that means, it is taken to single phase microstructure which is austenite and then quenched. Okay. So, that is the processing route. In fact, here only heat treatment is considered and that time all the elements are in solution. So, we see the chromium effect. Now, in fact, it would have effect of nickel on it. In fact, we will see that the effect of nickel on the penetration rate will be uh, not that much. Here, the nickel content is maintain between a certain range to make it austenite. So, the effect of nickel content would be and remember every time we are considering weight percent of nickel here weight percent, weight percent of nickel. So, again this is 1.0, this is 2.0 and millimeter per year which is penetration depth or penetration rate. In fact, if we do polarization, we will see the equation would be I core or penetration rate would be equal to I core into A which is atomic number and then N which is the number of electron participating for converting one mole of metal into its ion, f is 1 Faraday and rho which is basically the density of the material. So, I core coming from polarization study okay, is participating for converting one atom to its ion. For example, m n plus plus n e equal to m. So, we are talking about n means this one f is equal to 1 Faraday rho is density here it is gram per centimeter cube and this is we can get it from polarization study and if we do polarization study that time we can get I core. If we do a dissolution study we just take uh, so this is from polarization study I core is uh, ampere per centimeter square okay it's called m per centimeter square okay so this is 96 roughly 96500 coulomb fine 
one can determine this corrosion rate by doing polarization or uh, this is the route uh, for getting the penetration rate. Somebody can do weight loss measurement. So, that time penetration rate equation would be so w divided by a t w divided by and w is basically del w that means the weight loss a means area t is time divided by rho where all those things are del w is weight loss due to corrosion. A is area, let us say centimeter square, T is time, where it is, let us say second, rho is density. gram per centimeter cube. Okay. So, uh, these two methods one can employ to get to the measurement of penetration rate. Now, if we come, if we talk about the effect of nickel on the penetration depth, uh, here and in fact, uh, we missed one thing. Uh, when we talk about this penetration depth, we have to talk about corrosive we miss that. So, corrosive is here, uh, we talk about corrosive, here let us mention corrosive is uh, concentrated H N O 3. Okay. So, that is the uh, corrosive. Okay. So, we miss that. So, this is the corrosive. Okay. So, now we are talking about all those penetration depth in that corrosive and coro concentration concentrated is around 65 percent HNO3. If we talk about that, let us say we start from uh, 5 percent, 5 then 10. then 15, you will see that around close to 8, around 7 percent uh, the corrosion rate would be around this level, uh, 8 percent around this, 10 percent. So, like this it will vary. So, if we uh, uh, make a trend line, so you will see the trend line is looking like this. Okay. So, there is not much of variation in the corrosion rate starting from 7 to around 12 percent nickel. Okay. So, this is effect of nickel. So, effect of nickel if you consider the corrosion resistance of that material it does not matter much uh, from 7 to 12 percent of nickel, but if we get uh, uh, austenite at around 8 to 9 percent we should keep it because otherwise nickel is costly. So, it will increase the cost of the material. Then if we try to look at the effect of carbon, carbon has a serious effect on the corrosion behavior of uh, 304 stainless steel. Okay. So, in that particular concentrated HNO3, in fact, if we change the uh, acid also, it would have similar level of effect. Uh, if we talk about effect of carbon, One percent, two percent, and this is again millimeter per year. And carbon changing from 
let us say 0 0.5 1 uh, 0 0.2 0 0.3 like this if we see the change uh, close to around 0 0.03 percent the corrosion rate would be very low 0 0.03 to 0 0.02 so, here the value would be 0 0.02 to 0 0.03, it is a very low value. Once it goes to around uh, 0.2 percent, close to that 0.2, the corrosion rate shoots up and little variation of the corrosion rate would be like this. So, uh, the corrosion rate pattern is like this. So, once it goes close to around 0.3, uh, then the corrosion rate would be very high. Okay, And if we also take a trend line, so the trend line would look like this. Okay, So, this is the trend line you will get. This is the trend line you will get. So, that means it has a severe effect on the corrosion degradation once we increase the carbon content. Uh, the only reason could be the uh, this chromium carbide formation along the grain boundary uh, uh, can be a possibility because once we have extra carbon, uh, the chromium is a strong carbide former and that can also lead to uh, formation of chromium. So, sensitization effect can go up, fine. So, then we can also check about the effect of uh, manganese ok. So, this manganese effect if we try to look at again millimeter per year 1.0 2.0 and this is this is this was percentage of carbon this is percentage of manganese uh, it can vary from 1.0 2.0 like this and you will see that manganese content as we have talked about around 0.8 this will be here and then around close to this, this will be here. So, with little extra manganese, we can have uh, a very little down uh, variation in the corrosion rate. Again, the trend line would be almost flat. Okay. So, that means, effect of manganese on the corrosion behavior of 304 stainless steel is uh, limited. Okay. And now, if we consider effect of silicon, silicon has its strong effect, uh, at least uh, its effect is more than manganese or nickel. See, if we try to see extra silicon addition can lead to decrease in the corrosion resistance or increase in the corrosion uh, penetration, penetration rate. So, it, if we consider the effect of silicon, we are talking about effect of silicon. So, 1.0, 2.0, 3.0 percentage of silicon. So, at a very low silicon content, uh, the corrosion rate will be low and as we increase silicon, the corrosion rate would also increase and around close to 20 percent, it is like this. So, the trend line again if we try to draw trend line would be like this. So, uh, with increase in silicon content in this steel actually increases the 
penetration depth and here penetration depth again millimeter per year. Okay. So, this is effect of silicon and effect of nitrogen. So, nitrogen has its own effect, but uh, it is it is not that much uh, in this case also. So, nitrogen effect if we consider, so this is effect of silicon and let us say let us plot effect of nitrogen similar plot we can generate that is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and similarly if we have it like this 1.0, 2.0 and this is millimeter per year and uh, uh, very low nitrogen content. Here also uh, there is not much of variation in the corrosion resistance uh, when we have nitrogen. In fact, we increase in nitrogen lead to increase in uh, uh, corrosion resistance to some extent and trend line would be like this. Okay. So, this is effect of nitrogen in that particular uh, material. Uh, so, the corrosive is uh, 65 percent HNO3. Uh, the microstructure, this microstructure is uh, austenitic stainless steel and uh, heat treatment is uh, solutionized uh, annealing, annual and then quenching. So, that everything is in the solution and then uh, finally, uh, we are getting the variation of corrosion rate in terms of penetration depth per year and we could see that the effect of chromium is strong, effect of carbon is strong. So, that is what these two elements are very critical. In fact, effect of silicon is also uh, uh, fairly strong compared to nickel and manganese. Now, we could see if we take only about composition fixing the microstructure, uh, we could see that the surface film character is changing with the change in percentage of chromium nickel, manganese, molybdenum, uh, sorry not molybdenum, here no there is no molybdenum, uh, carbon, uh, nitrogen. So, we have considered 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, uh, 6 elements we have considered. So, that means uh, there is a substantial effect of composition on the uh, passive film character and accordingly we can have a difference in corrosion performance. So, this is uh, uh, one example of uh, uh, effect of composition or the uh, when we talk about uh, the material aspects for corrosion protection. That means, we have to have good amount of chromium, good amount of uh, less very less content of carbon. In fact, if we have 304 L which is low carbon, the carbon content is around 0 0.02 to 0 0.03 percent, we could see that the corrosion resistance improves because with uh, decrease in carbon content the corrosion rate reduces to a, a great extent. We will talk about a uh, few more examples on the passive film character as well as effect of microstructure. In this particular situation we are only seeing the effect of composition without changing the microstructure. So, this particular example has been taken from uh, ASM handbook volume 13A. This is corrosion resource protection. volume 13A. Right? So, uh, uh, let me stop here. Uh, we will consider many such examples uh, which will talk about effect of composition microstructure processing on the improvement of uh, corrosion resistance of a material. Thank you.